everyone welcome to another motor vlog on my channel my name is marshall 3498 and today's motor vlog what i'd like to talk about is motorcycle related as normal in today's motor vlog what i'd like to talk about is how good is a gen 3 klr 650 adventure how well does it do on the back roads and back road riding especially on a curvy road hopefully you can hear me pretty good uh, I do have a Bubba Club or a Net Gator on, have you say it, because it is 37 degrees, because it's, you know, December 19th as of recording this, so whatever. But, um, I mean, like, really tight stuff, the, like this, the bike does pretty well on, you know, it's got a lot of lean angle. Uh, this suspension is on the soft side, so you can't expect to do, like, sport bike level uh pace on the twisties but it's got a lot of lean angle the brakes are pretty progressive and pretty powerful uh as long as you're at a moderate pace think of it more like uh like a cruiser uh pace um but maybe a little faster you know if it's kind of more of a sweeping turn um the motor does really well actually it, it likes to kind of rev out uh, second and third gear on roads like this, you know, we're 35, 40 mile an hour. The bike says surprisingly well. Um, and of course, you know, you do have to watch out for trash or road like that right there. But, you know, this is with stock tires on it. My bike's a 2022 uh, with 850 miles on it. And the stock tires are still in really good shape as far as tread life left. So, gear results may vary if you have a more progressive tire on or more aggressive not progressive sorry uh tire on like a true 50 50 or something stock tires on this are more like a 70 30 80 20 so they do look kind of knobbly but they probably would be okay on a, a gravel road but not much more than that and definitely not anything muddy that's for sure uh, but you know for the for the price you just you can't hardly beat these new gen klr 650s they don't do a lot of things great, but, you know, for seven and a half grand before dealer prep and taxes, kind of hard to beat it. Um, and, you know, bike's got good headlights. Uh, like I said, the instrument cluster leaves a lot to be desired. It's like straight out of the KLX line, but whatever. Uh, they had to cut costs somewhere, and I guess they did that because that was available in their parts bin. So, yeah yes it'd be nice to have a tack but at least you still get a clock and a fuel gauge and two trips so and the odometer so could be better but i uh, could be could be much worse but you know i mean I, I really do you know let this truck go here um but you know it's just it's hard to beat the klr for what it is um for somebody like me who's always been a street rider you don't want to spend a lot of money getting into adventure riding to see if you like it so there's not much out there that compete with it yes the himalayan but the himalayan is not you know the himalayan is a good bike the himalayan is not suitable at all to anything above 65 and this bike will do 80 85 in a pinch uh but to crush miles on the interstate at interstate speeds uh probably need to look at a twin cylinder bike but for back road stuff and like just state highway when stuff's like 55 speed limits and under the bike does really well but you know you, you can't ask for much more than this for this kind of price you can't expect you know bmw level performance for sub ten thousand dollar brand new price tag and that's just all there is to it you know unfortunately in this world you get what you pay for and this is another thing you get what you pay for so you know i i really like my klr i don't think it'll be my forever bike but to get someone started in, in adventure riding like i said and see how they like it and get used to it pretty hard to beat uh you know like i said the, br the brakes the tire i mean the motor you know it's not the most powerful thing but it is fun to rev out and you know just kind of play up and down with the gears or whatever 
even though it is only a five speed the gearbox is surprisingly uh pretty slick it's still hard on mine even with almost a thousand miles on it it's still hard to get it neutral and to find neutral at times and another thing about the bike that i think is odd too maybe it's just me compared to like my fjr i can leave it in gear which i have a habit of doing to keep the bike from rolling whether it's uphill downhill whatever and my FJR, my Yamaha, you can pull the clutch in on it if you leave it in gear like I do in the garage on level ground and it'll still roll around the garage pretty easy. This thing won't hardly move at all. I don't know why. Maybe it's because the way the transmission it is. Maybe it's because my FJR is a shaft drive and this is a chain. Maybe it's just the way. Uh, I, I, I don't know. You know, it, it, it's kind of weird. I've, you know, this is the fifth motorcycle that I've owned now, I think. Or fourth one of the two and none of my bikes that I've had have been like that you know as far as you can't just pull the clutch in and roll them around and which I find kind of strange but this is that way for some reason maybe it's some like I said something to do the transmission yes it is a cable clutch but my FJR that doesn't make sense because my FJR has a slave cylinder and a, a and a um, slipper assists uh, too so I don't know that doesn't make sense to me I've still not figured that out probably never will whatever but like I said guys uh, if you have any questions comments concerns uh, anything you want to know please uh, hit me up in the comments and I'll be more than happy to help you uh, best of my ability to answer some questions maybe some insights you've got that I haven't covered as far as how the bike does on a day-to-day -day basis living with it riding it a lot commuting with it stuff like that so i'm that guys uh ride safe and have fun we'll see you on the next one see ya